I I went to uh I went to Vegas and then Zion National Park and then Death Valley and then back to I Vegas. I had a dream last night that I was a muffler. I woke up so exhausted. Also, quack quack. A hey, okay, the ducks are quacking back. I posted some Instagram stories. I was more active on Instagram than Twitch like recently. Yeah, there were ducks and then this this miniature horse kind of like a pony wanted to play anyway maybe i'll share some pictures later but let's go back to chess playing aj oh white moves first okay <laughs> play e4 i was just thinking about the um the fact i've never played a quaid variation of the king's gambit i don't know if i'll remember it but let's see if i can Something like g5, I think knight c3. Wait a minute. I think it's knight c3 here. I might be misremembering. At some point, Leechas calls it the Quaid. But I'm not sure... I feel like I already messed up. Because this is a move. Oh no, my thing. Wait, how does this even work? I'm going to have to refresh later. Also, I'm probably going to avoid looking at the chat because people likely know better than me. I don't want to be spoiled or have this line spoiled. So I'll just try and figure it out. Um... Yeah, maybe I was supposed to play h4 first. But I remember, like, white sacks are rook at some point. I just don't know. Oh, maybe this takes and then... Okay, we'll see if this has any merit. I'm pretty sure this is the Quaid variation, though. Takes, takes. Oh, black can do this. And I win the queen, but I lose my rook, and black makes a new queen. Oh. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is the main trap of the quaid. If I'm not mistaken, white's already, like, completely winning. Pretty sure knight d5. And knight d5 makes a ton of sense. Oh, thank you, Avanism. Thanks for the game. Additionally, as the prophet foretold, Quackeroni. Amen. Amen. So I'm basing my memory off of... It was just like a, a minute or two during the beginning of the Autumn Marathon stream where Stephen Gray... I could even show it like after this game on YouTube. Stephen Gray was explaining like this cool line in King's Gambit. I'm pretty sure I'm I've played it to a T. Also, hi. Hi. Ross the boss gave me a Stafford Gambit lesson on mm. Tuesday, which was fun. Oh, that's he awesome. Me to the list of non profit website which has lines to memorize while doing. Ah, uh, we study. Quack. Quack. Quack back. Welcome back. Oh, thank you, Silky07. Okay, so I should explain I was threatening, threatening Maiden 1. Um, Black doesn't defend the pawn, but counterattacks my queen. And now it's a question. I mean, I'm kind of tempted to play queen h5. That hangs. Yeah, that's just not a good move. Also tempted to play this where f7 and then c7 are both still hanging. I mean, queen f4 looks really nice. I should also calculate this. King d8. There's a funny line. I don't think it really works, though. 
Start getting knight c7, king d, queen f4. King c7, and I have a bunch of discoveries, but most knight moves are met with d6. So I think it makes more sense to play queen f4 first. And now, okay, now if I get a knight c7, king d8, then knight f7 would be mate to attack the king while simultaneously defending the knight. Man, this is such a fun position. And the problem for black, okay, even though black is up a full rook here, this queen is stuck. I was going to say the queen went in too deep, but it was more uh, the pawn turning into a queen. So this queen technically has not moved yet. <laughs> and yeah, white should have like full compensation for the rook. I guess, okay, knight c7, king f8. Oh, and then I, oh, I'm threatening maiden 2. Yeah, this is a, a real maiden 2 threat. So let's imagine this move. And I take with check king d8. Am I mating? Oh, this looks so close to mate. But maybe not quite. But it's really close. So I'm looking at queen f7, king d8, d3. Just defending any queen e4 shenanigans. And then threatening bishop g5. And if, oh no, my knight, bishop g5, knight f6. Uh... Yeah, I would just take, 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 king e8, queen e7 mate. Or knight c7 with a, a fork mate. Yeah, that would be fate. I'm just looking for better moves, but let's go with this. Yeah, d3, it's uh, not your typical forcing move. Not a check, not a capture, but... Okay, it has a devastating threat to it. I just want to bring more pieces to the party. Yeah, after this game, I'm going to have to check the theory. Because I'm pretty sure the position after g takes h1 equals queen, it's probably been reached like a few hundred times. I have a vague memory of the engine giving it as... Uh, like plus five for white. So the question is, how does black not get mated? Because the king can't really run this way. C6, I still play this. Knight control C7. I mean, maybe there's H6. <laughs> still down a rook. Rook for pawn. Yeah, imagining h6. It'd be really fun to like sack the queen, knight f7, but then there's king e8. Ooh. Oh. Oh, I really want to play this move. Because rook takes e8, knight f7 smother mate. But okay, queen e8, there's uh there's king takes. So it doesn't quite work. I mean, I have bishop g5, though, which I don't think I can resist. Any other options? I'm sensing some really, like, beautiful mate coming up, though, with the knights, the queen, the bishop. Black's pieces are kind of not doing much to defend the king. So I think rook e8's only move. Now, where is my smother mate? Man, I wish we were playing the variant where you could take your own pieces. Knight takes f7. Why is this not legal? The knight just wants to consume the queen. Uh Oh, there's this move. Three oh, times okay, baby. let's do this move. Welcome back, Eric. Oh, good to be back.
It's really good to be back. Given the position. Okay, so I'm threatening Maiden 1. If Black doesn't want to get mated, the Rook has to move back where it came from. But that's not going to help. Good afternoon from Singapore. Hey, Singapore Wanted back to in. replant the seed of the human plus engine versus human plus Ooh. engine idea again. Yeah, thanks for replanting. But it's time to plant another seed of a different type. Oh no, my queen. Dot com. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's so satisfying. That was a really satisfying smother mate. That was two smother mates in a row, right? Because the previous game too. Good to see you in here again. Hope you've had fun trip. Oh, I had lots of fun. Man, I can't stop sacking my queen for smother mate. Oh, it's too much. Yeah, th I mean, there were a lot of beautiful moves. There was knight g8, as someone saying in chat, which would have pinned and threatened queen f8 mate. Though maybe it's not forcing because the king can run. Um, yeah, real quick, let's, <laughs> let's learn something from this opening. So it started as King's Gambit. Oh, maybe before I actually dive in, let's see how good my memory was by looking at a recent YouTube video. Oh, man, I'm slightly overwhelmed by my thumbnails. But where is, okay, the, the autumn marathon. So, in the marathon video, I have chapters. And one of the chapters, I think, yeah, is this one. Learning an epic King's Gambit trap. Which I just achieved for the first time, I think. Okay, so we're going to relive the past. Oh, yeah. Okay, Stephen Gray saying what dance. the quaid is. Oh, yeah. E4, E5, Thanks to Stephen Gray. EF4, Knight F3. G5, Knight C3. So this is what I just had. Oh, it's a Quaid Gambit. What do people on Lee Chess do? Bishop Wait. G7 or G4. Okay, let's do a little bit of prep. Ah, so my opponent played G4, um, which is a more like forcing and more attractive move really for Black. Uh, so eventually I get to that. I looked at the Bishop G7 line first, but G4. Immediately. 95. Wait, what is this? Ah, this is what I just had. What is this? Takes. Oh, I can take on g4. Okay. And now here I realize. <laughs> two? <sighs> Am I discovering like the main trap? Oh, John Davis plays this. Ah, yeah, John. Really I think cool. John is a uh, pioneer in this line. And the black queen is reborn. So this is the first time I like became aware of this this variation. Uh, thankfully, I, I managed to remember it. So we got into that same position. Um, and oh, G two is just a losing move, which I'm sure I I realized like when I was reviewing that uh, that analysis, because G two just looks so natural. Most played, almost 1,200 times. And yeah, Black's up a full Rook. Oh, but I misplayed here. I'm supposed to play Queen H5, apparently. What's wrong with Knight D5? Wait, I'm losing here? Wow. So Black is doing okay. Is D6 only move? Only move d6, allowing queen f7, and then the king's safe, and I'm down a rook, and my knight's hanging, and my pawn's hanging. <laughs> I could have easily lost that game. Oh, that's fortunate. So I won the game in some beautiful fashion, and I learned a lesson. Because, yeah, engine says I was losing for a couple moves there. Um... So queen h5 is the only winning move for white. Idea being if knight h6 defending the pawn, then d4, 
again, only winning move. Apparently d3 isn't as strong. I wonder what the difference is. So a pawn is more active on d4. And then d6 takes, takes. So it's some engine line, takes. Now queen takes h8. Ah, pinning. So knight here. And now this is winning for white. Engine likes this. Let's say knight f8. And material wise, white's now up a pawn with a great position. Okay, d5 also coming. Okay, good to know. That was fun. My first Quaid variation.